All right, ladies and gentlemen, time for our next set of module six notes. Today we're going to look at lesson six dash five, patterns in vertical and horizontal lines. Now for this particular lesson, we've got some vocabulary. We're going to give you about four vocabulary words. They should be pretty familiar at this point, but just so that they're all in one spot. We are also going to be creating a graph. So you will need a ruler or some other straight edge. If you've got a ruler, that's going to make this the easiest, but we'll make do with whatever you've got. Now for the vocabulary, the first terms we're going to start with are the terms that are up here. Vertical. Vertical, I mean, again, I know we've talked about this a lot, but just to make sure, because it can get a little confused, vertical, these are lines that are straight up and down. Okay, These are the ones that go straight up and down. I'll even draw one like so. Straight up and down. Those are vertical. So if those are vertical, then the next one, horizontal, these, whoops, sorry folks, there's only one, uh, oh, one horizontal, there we go. These are straight across. Usually I think of them as left to right. So these are your lines like that. And again, we put our little arrows on the end to show that these lines go on forever and ever in both directions. Now, those are not perfectly straight. Real lines would be. I'm not going to stress about it too much right now. Okay. Our next word, we've talked about this quite a bit, parallel. Parallel. Two lines are parallel to each other if they never meet. If they never meet. Now mathematically, every point in one line is the exact same distance from another point in the other line, and they're the same distance across the entire line, and the they never meet. They never cross. That's what I want you to hang on to. That's what I want you to remember. Parallel lines are parallel to each other because they never meet. They never cross. They never intersect or touch. Now this is different than perpendicular lines. Okay. Perpendicular two lines are perpendicular Mr. Landre, you're having so much trouble spelling today. <laughs> perpendicular. I guess that's why I teach math. Two lines are perpendicular when they meet. So again, when they meet, when they cross, when they intersect. When they meet at 90 degree right angles. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we've done a lot of work with this already. If two lines meet and they form a right angle, a perfect corner, 90 degrees, they are perpendicular to each other. And it's really not just the one. Depending on how they cross, it could be up to four, but we'll mostly just be focusing on one. Now, like I said, we are actually going to be creating a graph today, so let's go ahead and explore a little bit. What I would like you to do to start, you're going to count down, start here, and we'll use the red margin line to help us on this. Okay. Go ahead and count down 12 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Just wanted to make sure. We are going to connect these two points to create our y-axis. We're going to create our y-axis. Okay. 
Now it's a little backwards maybe, but we'll put our arrow up on the top to show that it continues on and on forever that way. We'll leave this one as a dot because this is eventually going to be our origin. Now we are going to draw the x-axis perpendicular. It's going to touch, it's going to meet the y-axis, and it's going to create a 90 degree angle. Now this is again where the ruler is especially helpful. I would suggest this line should be about three, three and a quarter. Not exact, but it doesn't have to be. I'd like you to measure out a line that's about three and a half inches this way. Now I said before, I'll say again, if you don't have a ruler or if for some reason in your notes it's just hard to get it exact, it doesn't really need to be perfect. Ideally, graph paper would be the way to go with this, but since we're writing our notes and most of our notes are on line paper, we will make do. Now, like I said before, this is your x-axis going straight across horizontally. And up here, this is your y-axis. It climbed up going vertically. Down here in this corner, this is our origin. We mark it with a zero. Now, labeling the y-axis is pretty easy because we've got the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ought to do it. Okay. You can label every single one of these, but you really don't have to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten probably should be good. Now, we've been working a lot with fractions. We're not going to do that in this particular activity. So every one of these lines is a full complete unit. We're not going to break it up into fractional parts right now. Okay. Now, going across this is a little trickier. We have to kind of eyeball it. You can use your ruler and try to measure. This should be about a quarter of an inch. I'll go ahead and do that since you're all looking at mine. That's what I always say. But again, please, just as best you can, we want to make 10 more marks as evenly spaced as possible. Like I said, I'll go ahead and use my ruler, and I'll use the quarter inch marks to get it pretty close. Technically, that's a little too small, but it should be good enough. Okay, So I'll go out to about, let's go to three and one fourth. I think that's probably more than we'll need. We'll count them out. Okay, One, two, three, four. Five. I'm going to label it just like I did before. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So it goes a little further than the other one. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Okay. As long as it goes to ten. Now you can do this anytime you need to make a coordinate plane. Anytime you need to make a coordinate plane. Again, graph paper makes this a lot easier. But there's your process if you don't have graph paper. Now what we're going to do today is plot some points. So I am going to zoom out a little bit. If you need to pause the video to go back and finish that, then please do. But we're going to plot some points. And I want you to look for a pattern. I want you to look for a pattern. The first point, I'm going to create a little table down here. I'll give you a point. I'll give you the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, and then we'll go ahead and write them together because really that's what we ought to be practicing. So go ahead and draw some parallel lines. This is parallel to the margin. This should be parallel to both of those. This should be parallel to both of those. And then I will draw a perpendicular line. This is actually going to be perpendicular to all of them. There we go. And now we've got our little table. All right. Hopefully it'll go a little bit faster once we get started. There it is. Okay. So our first point is going to be point H. And point H is going to have an X coordinate of 4, which means we'll count over 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be on this line. Now, if I had graph paper, it would be an actual line, but 
We'll make do as best we can. Okay? Y will be 3. So up 1, 2, 3. Point H, point H is going to be right there. Four comma three. All right, let's pick it up a little bit. You can always pause the video if you need a little more time. For I, X coordinate is 10, Y coordinate is three. So we're gonna count over 10, five, 10, and then up three, one, two, three. Again, the lines make it very easy. Okay, so that is going to be H I high. Let's go on to point J. Point J is 8, 3. Sorry, I need to make sure I'm writing them properly. 10, 3 over 8. So here's 10, 9, 8. I go right here and then up 1, 2, 3. Point J should be right there. 8, 3. K is next. For K, let's do X is 1, Y is 3. So 1, 3. Now I'm hoping that most of you are already noticing a pattern here. For 1, up 1, 2, 3. There are a couple things I want you to notice. We'll go ahead and do one more. Let's talk about point L. Point L is going to be at 6, and I'll bet most of you could probably guess the Y coordinate already. 6, oops, down at the very bottom of the page here, 6, comma, let's go with 3. So over 6, up 1, 2, 3 is L. Now take a look at all of these points. All of these points, they're not in alphabetical order anymore, and that's okay. All of these points are on a straight line. They are on a horizontal line. And the reason for that is because every single one of them has the same Y coordinate. We tried to talk about this a little bit earlier, and it is kind of challenging to wrap your head around. When we're talking about Y. Yes, we're counting on this line, but what we're really counting is how far we're traveling away from the x-axis. Y is a measurement of distance away from the x-axis. Every single one of these points is the same distance away from the x-axis. They all have the same y-coordinate. This line is perfectly horizontal because every point is the same distance away from the x-axis. It's also parallel to the x-axis because every point is the same distance away. Now, we are going to stop here. In class, when we pick up on this, we're also going to talk about how I can do the same thing with a vertical line. A vertical line that is perfectly parallel to the y-axis is going to be the same distance from the y-axis at every point. So that means its x value, the distance it traveled on the x-axis, would be the same. If I flipped this around, if I changed this, I would have a vertical line, 3 away, Let's go ahead and try that, shall we? If everything was over 3 and then up, however, we would create a vertical line at the 3 mark. These notes are starting to run a little long, so I'm going to stop here. Like I said, when I see you in class next, we're going to practice this. So it is very important that you have this axis because we are going to continue on this page. We are going to fill in, I'll give you another chart, we're going to create another line. We will do that together, so please make sure you copy this. 
I'm going to go ahead and stop here. If you have any questions, make sure you contact me or we'll discuss them in class. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.